because what she said is that she said that Samuel also got me pregnant and now he doesn't want to be responsible for the pregnancy. He's basically ghosted me. Okay. That's what she's saying that he's ghosted her. He's blocked on all social media and on WhatsApp. She doesn't have access to him at all. African doll, you're welcome. Thank you. Right. Oh, well, I, yeah, you thank you very much for joining us tonight. And this is your story. And I'm a, I'm not about to, yes. to tell it for you. You're here to tell it. Uh, so tell us, start from the beginning and tell us how you met Sammy. Okay. So we met um, because I um, went to one of his shows here in Texas. Well, I went to a few, but we met um, at a concert at one of the churches not far from my home. And um, then we started, we started following each other on Instagram, um, along with another artist that he performed with. Um, and we built a rapport like through Instagram. And then he asked me for my number, my, my cell phone number. I gave him my cell phone number. He gave me his Nigerian number and his American number. So we would kind of converse back and forth on the phone, through WhatsApp, through regular call, and through Instagram chat. Right. Um, that was, yeah, that was how it started. So he, he invited me to his hotel and um, I went to his hotel and we hung out, went to dinner. You know, we, we actually, actually had spent the night. So we, we were together until the protocol people came that morning and picked him up and he went back to Nigeria. We still stayed in contact, he invited me to another show. And um, it just kind of went from there. We had built a rapport. We're not in a relationship, I will say that. Mm -hmm. We were friends, mm -hmm. getting to know one another, and we, we did sleep together. We messed around on more than one occasion. Okay. I will admit that. And I am accountable for my part in that. Yeah. You know, whether it's right or wrong, I am accountable for that. So basically, um, you know, we, he was, we, would, we still kept in contact when he would go back and forth. You know, to Nigeria a few times, he came back. He was like, oh, I have a show coming up in December. You know, I even um, helped him. You know, he, he messaged me, which I sent to you, you know, about the tickets and uh, Dallas uh, SOPP Live in Farmers Branch, Texas. You saw my friend flew here. We went, you know, uh, prior to that, I saw him that, you know, around that same time. I even told him, which I sent messages to you, like, worship with him and Vashawn Mitchell uh, rehearsing before the, the show that was December the 24th. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not making it up. I even said, because I asked him on uh, WhatsApp, I said, do you want me to open it for you so that you can see what I got you? And he said, yes. So I sent him a video of me opening it up in which I have that video and I sent to you on TV. Yes. And he wore that on his live. Uh, re rehearsal for the SOPP Dallas with Bashan Mitchell. So I'm just, I'm not here to put him like, to, because he messaged me like, oh, do what you want. You know, when he basically blocked me, um, he told me that he was done with the conversation. I'm trying to, to, to disgrace him. Um, you know, you just, you're trying to disgrace me, do whatever you want to me. And I'm telling him the whole time, like, look, I am not trying to get anything from you. I am not here to to disgrace you, you know, we are both wrong. I never, he, he posted finally, if you look at his Instagram, he hadn't posted any pictures of a wife until like January the 11th. And that was kind of like after we had got into it. And, you know, so whether, again, it's not to slander, to defame, I keep mentioning, oh, you're trying to blackmail me. No, I'm not. I, I've never asked him for anything. I've never asked him for anything other than respect because he got very verbally aggressive, called me a fool. He called me an idiot. He um, was talking a bunch of rubbish, you know, in the messages and, and over the phone while he was in Nigeria. When, when I first told him, like, look, I even sent him pictures from the doctor. And I'm like, look, want to talk to the doctor? Yeah. You know, I, he, he said it wasn't a matter of him not believing me. But what he said was to do the needful and get rid of it. When I asked you, I said, did you know that Samuel Poso is a married man? Mm -hmm. When you started, when you started, you know, this, right. you know, it's not a relationship right. when you start, when you guys started messing around. Right. We never, we never talked about him being married. We never, 
honestly, let me just say that I, he is someone that I listened to for a while. I didn't go digging in deep about um, anything. I think I was just kind of caught up in the moment of just, oh, wow, you know, this is somebody that I am fond of and I've been listening to for years. And for him to personally invite me and spend time with me on more than one occasion and take me to eat and, you know, and, it, it just kind of like happened. I'm not saying that I did not know or that he did not know. No, I was a participant. I was a willing participant. Right. It, right. You know? And and it's wrong. I'm not saying it's a good thing. It's wrong. And I was trying to communicate with him like, okay, this is the situation. Where do we go from here? Even in the midst of this, I was still willing and trying to cover him. I was telling him like, no, I wouldn't do that. No. No, and he's like, oh, I thought you were my friend. I thought you cared about my ministry. You're trying to disgrace me. You need to do the needful, you know, and, and uh, an abortion and this and that. And I'm like, wow. Told me that he was going to no longer be accessible for me to talk to. And, and then he blocked me. And then I'm like, well, that doesn't make it go away. It doesn't make it go away. You know, and talking to me like, oh, you think somebody will believe you? Some random person. Like, I'm a nobody, basically.